places. We're now going to have a chat to Adelaide's National Recruiting Manager in Hamish Ogilvy. Hamish, thanks so much for joining us. You had pick four tonight and you selected Patrick Parnell. How long has he been in your sights? And I guess what are the attributes that you really uh, were attracted to? Uh, hi, Nat. How are you? Um, well, we knew, we knew Paddy from when he was a 17-year-old playing at the Bushies, but He's a bit of a different player now than he was back then. He was very lightly framed as a as a 17-year-old. So we saw him in that year, obviously no footy last year, and um, he's just been so impressive this year. So our philosophy was really to take the most talented player um, at, at our pick. It was more of uh, about where we're going and where Paddy might be in the future. So we didn't really go for needs. Um, but it's, very, it's nice that he's got some real speed and he can play at both ends and on the wing. So... Um, that was very pleasing. We were we probably had him locked in for a couple of weeks and hoped that he might get to our pick. Hey, I guess when do you expect him to be available at senior level? Obviously, we see some players, as you mentioned, uh, come in and be ready-made. He's at the other end of the scale, a lighter-bodied sort of player. But do you expect this season we could see him at AFL level? Well, he's played senior footy for Aubrey, Cal, but um, uh, we, we want to just get into Adelaide first. Fortunately, he's in Aubrey, so he can go to Sydney and then into Adelaide. He's not in Victoria, so that, that helps. Um, look, there's a chance he might play this week in our sample if we can get him in in time and everything. Uh, all the COVID protocols can get, um, get done, but um, there's no expectations. Uh, for where we're at at the moment, this is a pick for the long term. We're not. Uh, this is not for 12 minutes. Hopefully, it's for many years down the track, but he's... We love his qualities. He's a great lad. He comes from a terrific family. So uh, his kicking and his decision-making was a real highlight for us. When you look at the numbers that he produced in the NAB League games and in the Young Guns this year, um, it, it was a really good fit for us. Hamish, can you just explain to the viewers uh, why the one pick tonight? So he did have the option of taking three picks if he want them. Tyson Stengel's uh, delisting from the footy club earlier this year. Mitch Hinge and Wayne Miller's injuries. Why just the one and, and uh, the, the rationale around that? Oh, we want to keep some um, list flexibility for the end of the year, um, Mitch. So that that was the main reason. Um, and, you know, we we're really sure on Paddy. We want to give him the best chance and um, put all the resources around him. But it's mainly for list flexibility at the end of the year. Hey, Mitch, how have you dealt with the mid-season draft as opposed to scouting for the national draft? How have you split up your, your time and energy as this one's approached versus... You know, keeping a really close eye on what the 2021 national draft pool looks like. Oh, not much different, Cal, but with with reduced staff from what we've had in the past. So Steve McChrystal's done a fantastic job with Paddy, and Steve's extremely experienced, one of the most experienced recruiters in the AFL. So uh, between him and I, and Adam Shepherd, who were fortunately we we got across from Collingwood at the start of the year, we've been able to cover Paddy in most of his games. So um, and the vision was good. And given he'd had some pretty good numbers and lots of possessions, it was easy to do him off the vision as well. So we'd seen pretty much every game he'd play. Um, so whilst we were watching a few other players, we were able to watch Paddy as well. Were you surprised overall tonight at how many picks there were taken? I mean, this is a group that, uh, speaking to lots of clubs in the lead-up, there's a the view that maybe there might be 14, 15 picks. There's well, well more than that. It, it seems like clubs are really invested in this year's mid-season. Yeah, look, it's promising uh, Promising for the mid-season draft going forward. I don't know if I'm surprised. We, we were locked into what we want to do and we didn't really worry about um, what everyone else was going to do. So when we decided we're only going to have the one pick and, and we had that early pick, it was pretty straightforward. So that's good. It's good for some young ruckmen to get picked. It's good for the game. We know, Hamish, everyone was sort of holding their breath around what Hawthorne would do at that second pick. When it came to you and Ned Moyle was still available, was there a moment where you thought maybe... Maybe we should go after that? Or you were definitely locked into Patrick? No, we, we were Paddy all the way now. <laughs> Hamish, what do you think about the trading of future picks for mid-season drafts in years to come? Do you think we'll get to the stage where we can trade? We've got a few colleagues in the office here that'd be pretty happy if you could do that. Um, yeah, I think it's worth some discussion. I don't think clubs would have put a lot of time or thought or planning into that yet, but I, I think we could all get in a room and have a discussion about that, um, make it exciting for the viewers. All right, Hamish, thank you so much for taking time out to join us tonight and congratulations on your pick four. Thanks, guys.